Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Numbers chapter 30. And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes, concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. So this is given to those that are in charge of Israel. When they would go up to the people of Israel and tell them, If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul. Now look at his soul. And that's going to show up quite a few times when we're talking about these oaths. That's your eternalness. That is what you that lasts even after you die. Yours, his soul with a bond. He shall not break his word. That's contracts. It's anything you make an oath. Swear to God. Better be careful what you say. Swear to man. You better be careful what you say. He shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. Japheth, we read about in the book of uh, Judges. He said, Lord, anybody, the first thing that comes out of my house when I come home after victory, I am going to offer it to you. Boom, here comes his daughter. He said, well, how wicked he did offer his daughter, but he was a man of his vows. Many Americans are not a man of their vows. So there's a man. Two verses about the man and his vows. No excuse. No lameness. You say it, you do it. If a woman also vow a vow unto the Lord. Now we're going to see verses 3 all the way down to 14 about the woman. And bind herself with a bond. Being in her father's house in her youth. So she's a child. She's under her father. And her father hear her vow. And her bond. Wherewith she has bound her soul. There's the soul. And her father shall hold his peace at her, and all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherein she has bound her soul shall stand. So, a daughter has said something that she's going to do, and it goes on, and within time her father has the revelation of that oath. And he, well, doesn't say nothing, doesn't, have, doesn't do anything. Those oaths of that woman is going to be bond. But if her father disallow her in the day, in the day that he heareth not any of her vows or of her bonds, wherewith she has bound her soul shall stand, and the Lord shall forgive her, because her father has disallowed her. He hears that his daughter has made an oath, has made a vow, and he steps in and says, Lord God, I disallow. I make void, and we'll see that word coming up, what my daughter said. And God says, okay, I forgive her because her father said, do not credit her to what she said to her mouth. And if she had at all, his, at all a husband, when she vowed or uttered out of her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, and her husband heard it, and held his peace at her in the day that he heard it. Then her vow shall stand, and her bonds wherewith she she bound her soul shall stand. So he gets word, the father or her husband within time. And the bond, the, the bond, the soul that she has made, the vows. And he doesn't open his mouth at that point and say no or yes. But here is no. 
He cannot later on say, oh, well, you know what? Now thinking about that, I don't think. At the point he hears that, he's going to speak to God. He's going to say, God, no, I'm not going to honor that as a husband. The father, too. Now, the father can't step in when, when she's got a she's got a husband because a wife is no longer under her father when she's married. She's either got a father or she's got a husband. But, verse 8, if the husband disallow her on the day that he heard it, he hears about, no, Lord, absolutely not. Then he shall make her vow which she vowed and that which she uttered with her lips, wherewith she bound her soul of none effect, and the Lord shall forgive her. But every vow of a widow, a woman whose, whose husband has died, and of her that is divorced, husband's left her, wherewith they have bound their souls, shall stand against her. There's no man there to relieve her. And if she, bow, if she bowed in her husband's house, or bound, in her, bound her soul by a bond with an oath, and the husband heard it, and he held his peace at her, and disallowed her not, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherein she is bound her soul shall stand repeated twice. This is a verily, verily. When Jesus wants your attention, he said, verily, verily. When God wants your attention, he puts it twice in the Bible. When he really wants your attention, he'll put it three times in the Bible. When he wants your real complete attention, he'll put it four times in the Bible. Now, let's step away from this vow for a minute. You know how many times that ark, that ark of the covenant, the mercy seat, and the tabernacle is mentioned in the book of Exodus and Numbers and Deuteronomy? There are more things in here about this woman and her vow under her husband or under her vow than the mention of the birth of Jesus Christ. The birth of Jesus Christ is only one gospel, Luke. Matthew, he shows up two or three, somewhere around two or, three, two or three years old, according to what the scriptures say. There's more here than, than the birth of Jesus. And yet, what's more important than these vows here, four times mentions the death, four times mentions the burial, four times mentions the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So verse 10, and she bowed in her husband's house and bound her soul by a bond or no, if her husband heard it and held his peace, doesn't say nothing, at her, and disallowed her not. He allows it. And all her vows shall stand. Every bond wherein she is bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband has uttered, utterly made them void. Void. Uh, voidhood prohibited. Not going to allow it. On the day he heard it. So it has to be that day. Then whatsoever proceeds out of her lips concerning her vows. And concerning the bond of her soul. Notice how again how soul keeps coming up shall not stand her husband has made them void and the lord has forgiven her every vow and every binding oath to afflict the soul her husband may establish it or the husband may make it void so the husband can these vows can say i don't want it for his wife or i'm not going to say nothing and about but for the man verses one and two when he makes an oath there's no one to clear him Verse 15, but if he shall anywise make them void after that, he has heard them, after he has heard them, then he shall bear her iniquity. Ooh, look at that. The charge is put on the husband. As soon as he's here, he better do something. Well, yea or nay, and he better know at that point, is it a yea or is it a nay? These are the statutes, statute, that's a law, which the Lord commanded Moses between a man and his wife, between a father and his daughter, being yet in her youth, in her father's house. Well, that's a great responsibility there. And now let's see this in practice, 1 Samuel chapter 1. And we do have an illustration in the Bible. And what we'll do is we'll start in 1 Samuel 1, verse 10. And she was in bitterness of soul. This is Hannah. 
and prayed on the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me, and not forget not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man child. She's barren. This would be her only child. And I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. And there shall no razor come upon his head. There is the vow. And it came to pass as she was continuing prayer before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah has spanked in her heart. Only her lips moved. But her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. This guy is crazy. Everything is going on in this guy's life. I've seen people pray with, with their mouths moving. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away that wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, I am a woman of sorrow spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my soul. How did that get in there? Before the Lord. See, it's a serious oath. Count not thy handmaid as the daughter of Belial, as his children are. For out of the abundance of complaint and grief have I spoken thereto. The Eli answered and said, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. Eli has overstepped his bounds because he doesn't even know what she asked. Now what we just read in Numbers... It said in Numbers that, stay in first Samuel, it said in Numbers chapter 30 that either the father or the husband. Now this woman just made an oath with, to God with her soul and not even know what she said. We know what she said in the writing. He says, well, go ahead and establish that prayer. That prayer was an oath. That's how wicked Eli is in his ministry. He's not even asking her what she prayed for. Let's just go ahead and let your prayers be answered. Man, what if it was a bad prayer? Was her prayer to kill her husband and go find a man that was able to produce her a child? And she said, let thy handmaid, verse 18, find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was, was no more sad. And there arose up in the morning early, and worshipped before the Lord, and returned and came unto the house to Ramah. And Elikin, her, knew, Elikin knew Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Therefore it came to pass when the time was come about, that, about after Hannah had conceived, that she bare a son, and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. Sam means ask. Yul is God. Jehovah. And those Hebrew words, the roots, of, especially the names, are great to know. Because it will help you some, with some of your words. El means Jehovah. Sam means ask. So you know anybody named Sam means ask. Because I have asked him of the Lord. The man Elikin and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord a yearly sacrifice and his vow. Now that vow there is the end. You know, he's going to say, I've given this animal, this specific animal to God. And he's doing it. Now watch. But Hannah went not up. For she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned. And then will I bring him, that he may appear before the Lord, and there abide forever. That is her vow. Verse 11. I'm going to give this child to you, God. That's the vow. Now watch her husband's reaction. And Elkin and I and her husband said unto her, Do what seemeth good. Tarry unto thou wean him. Only the Lord established his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck unto she weaned him. So he allowed that oath, that vow that Hannah made to God. He said, Okay, do what you have to do, then give that child. Now, what kind of reward was that? Look at chapter 2, verse 21. And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters 
And the child Samuel grew up before the Lord honored that vow. In the eyes of God, that was a good vow because she really loved the Lord. That's hey, hey, listen, I'm without a child. I'll give them to him. But that's not the subject right now. That's the subject of this vow that we've heard and the learning of the vow. And you run into a particular story like Jezebel. Man, she makes a vow about killing a man's life and her husband does nothing about it. He just leaves his signet ring wherever it lies around. Or maybe she had her own. It's a serious business that God honor Hannah with more children. And Samuel is a man that's a name in the Bible. He's a well-known man in the Bible. And he's helped Israel when you got the priesthood is all followed up. So that's the vows. And most question you'll see Solomon in the book of Ecclesiastes and all the teachers about it, you better not vow at all. Because you don't know what tomorrow is. You don't know what tomorrow can be old. 